Hello everyone, I'm Black Marvin, a progressive psychedelic trance artist, a professional sound designer, and I'm also a teacher for electronic music production. Today, we are diving into Vital and we're going to make a fat acid sequence. In order to do that, we're going to create the wavetable that we're going to use today. And the final result is going to be included in a pack called Exogenesis. It's going to be 100 Cytrans presets for Vital. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be out on Fractal Sounds eventually. I'm working on that. And I'm also working on an Acid Wavetable collection. And it's going to be available also. And the techniques I use today, it's a sneak peek on many techniques that I use in my sound design. Before we go deeper, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss the next vital related content or just some awesome sound design tips in general. And let's go. So we're going to be breaking down this preset today. So I'm going to disable all the effects section. And then I'm going to bypass the LFOs. And this is what we're left with. All right, actually, this wavetable is the core of the preset, and that's very important uh, if we want to be able to get that sound. And I'm going to show you how I did this wavetable. So for this wavetable, I took Transistor Bass, which is a TB303 emulation from ImageLine, and it's a very good one. So I chose a patch in particular. <laughs> which to be honest, I don't remember, and I'm pretty sure it's not this one, but it's okay, I'm gonna create just another wavetable, another acid wavetable, which is going to be good to have inside my toolbox. Uh, but the process of creating that wavetable is exactly the same as that. I took a specific patch, specific acid patch, um, got rid of the delay, and you know, why not a bit of distortion on this one? Yeah, I like this one. So we're going to go here. There's just a bit of a true high run here. Super, super subtle uh, distortion, but uh, this is how I like my things. Then Edison. And we're going to hit the C note, and that's very important. C note. Why C? Because C, it's, it's just a good middle ground to work with everything that you sample. It's easier to know that everything is in C. So I'm going to cut that and save that. So now I'm going to drag and drop that sample inside Vital. And when you do that, you have the choice of three different algorithms. Each algorithm is going to import the file in a different way. We're going to use pitch splice for this one. And this is what we have. You can hear that it's a bit different than the first one that we had. And this one is, is more resonant, but it's going to be nice to work with this one. And in the end, I can also swap the original one, but it works too. So we have that powerful sweep. Now what's next is to set up the LFO one at one bar. And the first thing we're going to assign is I'm going to unbypass this. And it's that LFO is going to be assigned on the wavetable position. So that, you know, that little movement that I was doing by hand. Now this is going to be this sequence that's going to be doing it. And yeah, in order to do that, we're going to go right here because we're going to take the sweep backwards because it sounds better. And this is how it sounds. And you can hear that already it starts to groove. Now, another thing that we're going to do is we're going to unbypass this one and we're going to use the exact same sequence, but this time it's going to be on the level of oscillator one. So this means that the level is going to be open and closing at the same rate as that sequence. But you can hear that at this time, it's a bit too dry. It's a bit in the sense that not dry in sense of effect, reverb and stuff, but it's a bit too on and off. So I'm going to still give it like a some kind of a floor of a level. So it doesn't close all the way up, but it still has that motion.
just give it also a bit of gain here because since it's not the same wave table i think it reacts better that way now there's another modulation assigned but we won't use it for this preset now it's cool but we don't have the sliding part of it so that's why we have lfo2 here which is in unipolar mode and this one has a modulation value of 12 on the pitch here of oscillator one so i'm gonna activate that so the pitch is going like this it stays on one octave bumps up one octave and then slides down so that's back here that's the the slide aspect of the sequence yeah so that gives us that nice sliding part now it's good but you can hear that it's a bit thin you know the, the sounds a bit thin uh there's something here also that you need to know is that there's a two voices unison and nine percent but this is not normal unison this one is set up on odd harmonics so it just gives a bit more character and you can you'll hear if i dial up more voices you'll hear how it sounds <laughs> so it's super subtle but it just adds uh, a bit of character to that uh, unique wavetable so now the effects section this is what's going to make it less thin uh, i don't even recall if we had a chorus but yeah i think yeah there's no chorus right now because I set up uh, previously a macro on that, but there was a no chorus on the first time. So for sure, multiband compressor. And the way we set up the multiband compressor is that we, we're trying to avoid those clicks or that too too much of a clicky behavior that we can sometimes have with that those OTT style. All right, and now distortion is very important and now i'm hearing a bit of a fuzz that was not there uh with the first wave table but since this is not the same yeah it's right there also one thing you can do when you have problems like this you can try to just uh assign those kind of stuff to the mix it helps keeping it clean now uh this was the setup that we had for the last wave table uh, but since we made a new one we can dial it up more <laughs> all right now we have that delay which is a setup at uh tempo dotted one eight and it's a mid ping pong but it's currently not activated but you can dial it up a bit if you want some nice delay there's also an eq and it's just getting rid of uh resonance here there's just a bit of a nosy resonance and since again this is not the same wave table i'm gonna give it a bit more uh high frequency content so that's the science behind that reset and what's important to understand is that sequence here really has a big effect on the preset because of the way we sampled our wavetable. Uh, this is really what is articulating the whole preset. And just for fun, we can play with the speed and you can see that, what it does. And also, if you change the values, it changes the groove. You can also choose to not link it to the level and you'll get a more sustained result. Which is interesting too. We in this case we really get that uh 
like OTT sound on it, uh, that crispiness, almost like a, like noisy crispiness, which is cool. Uh, we didn't have that on the first time. But yeah, this is how you do a fat acid sequence inside Vital. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning how to turn Vital into an acid machine. Like you saw today, we created a wavetable and that was a big part of getting that sound. And in Vital or any other wavetable synth, feeding the synth some proper wavetable is a big part of getting some quality sound. That's, that's how you get most out of wavetable synthesis. And if you feel your current library needs a little boost, I suggest you go check out the link in the description for the Fractal Sounds wavetable. There's a couple of wavetable packs that will help you boost up your library. If you want to learn more about electronic music production, you feel you need some one-to-one -one mentoring, some group lessons, or just some coaching in general, don't forget to check out my community of students. The link is in the description. The community is growing and it is fun to learn together and progress. And until then, I will see you in another video. Happy producing.